In his address to the nation on India's 76th Independence Day, Prime Minister Narendra Modi declared his intention of erasing all forms of colonial baggage and restoring pride in our nation's heritage. Here are nine significant initiatives taken by the government of India to decolonize India and restore its glorious heritage. Number one, the iconic Rajpath from Rashtrapati Bhavan to India Gate is to be renamed as Kartavya Path or the Path of Duty. Rajpath, which meant the King's Way in Hindi, was named after King George V during the British era. Number two, the Saint George Cross in the Indian Navy's flag has been dropped. A new ensign with a blue octagon encompassing the national emblem atop an anchor with the Sanskrit verse Sham no Varuna written has been adopted. The octagonal shape draws inspiration from the seal of Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj who established a formidable navy to protect the country from external aggressors. Number 3. The empty canopy at Delhi's India Gate which earlier had the statue of King George V will have a grand life-size statue of Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose. Number 4. Three islands in Nandaman named after British officials have been renamed. The Ross Island named after East India Company hydrographer Daniel Ross is now Bose Island named after Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose. The Neil Island which was named after British Brigadier General James Neil is now called Shaheed Dweep. The Havelock Island named after another British general Henry Havelock is now called Swaraj Dweep. For 7 decades these two islands in India had the name of British army men who had fought for the East India Company in 1857 War of Independence. Number 5 in 2019 Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman scripted history by doing away with the budget briefcase and opting a bahi khata to carry the budget papers adapting to the changing times paperless budget is being presented through a made in india tablet since 2021 by the finance minister until 2016 the union budget was presented in the lok sabha on the last working day of february a practice since the british era today the budget is presented on the first working day of february that gives more time to effect changes for the upcoming financial year the railway budget was also merged with the general budget after 92 years in 2017 number 6 despite not being a mandate indian universities have been carrying on the british style of wearing a black robe and a cap during convocation the ugc has prescribed that students wear traditional indian outfits during convocations with many premier institutes already implementing the same Number 7 The road leading to the official residence and principal workplace of the Prime Minister of India was earlier called the Race Course Road. It was renamed as Lok Kalyan Mark in September 2016. Number 8 The center has repealed around 1500 old and obsolete laws most of which were remnants of the British era. For example, there was a colonial era law that considered kites as aircraft and one needed to obtain a permit as required for an aeroplane to fly a kite. There was even a law that penalized industries if they did not whitewash their toilets every 6 months. All these British era laws have been done away with. Number 9. Abide with me, a Christian hymn penned and composed by the British has been part of the beating retreat ceremony of India's annual Republic Day celebrations since 1950. This is a song that was played at the wedding of Queen Elizabeth II and was also played by musicians as the Titanic went down. This has now been replaced with A Mere Watan Ke Logo which commemorates Indian soldiers who died in the 1962 war against China. It has been 7 decades since India attained independence. Yet remnants of the colonial past have hung on to the Indian realm sidelining our own history and heritage. And successive Congress governments at the center have done nothing about it. Today the government of India has embarked on a mission to slowly but surely reverse the lasting impact of British colonial legacy and return India to its original Bharatiya identity.